Clink. Welcome to Hacker News Nation, episode 20, the big 2-0. My name is Matan. Mm -hmm. This is Chris. And I'm Chris. And uh, every week we come and sit down for students of one month and you watching, anyone watching, to count down the top stories from the website hackernews.com and other sites around the web. It's not hackernews.com. Tech news. It is not. It is news.ycombinator.com. Yeah, Hacker News is a different site. It's uh, kind of weird that they it call does. it Hacker News, but if they don't have the domain, Hacker News. Yeah. Yeah. So, so who knows? Um, and, uh, and we're excited. OK, let's dive right into it, because why Why not? Yeah, do you have some good stories this week, Matan? Oh, well, first of all, I was going to just put this out there. It's April 1st today. Yes. It's not going to be April, April 1st when you get this. Are we gonna talk about April Fool's Day, or is that like a? I we could talk. about I have some. So there were some good April Fool's jokes today, and I'm not usually a fan of the April Fool's jokes. Like the corporate April Fool's jokes, I usually think fall a little flat. So, um, so the first story: the best tech April Fool's jokes of 2014. Okay. Who could resist? Hit me. And and I chose this with all of that knowledge that they're not usually that funny. I thought that the Airbnb one was especially funny. What did they do? So uh, I'll just I'll just show it here. And everybody can watch along. So what they have... Are you skipping it? Uh, yeah, I'm skipping to the funny part. So the guy here, this guy is so funny. So they call it uh, Air BRB. And the idea is that when you're at your desk, you can go, you're like, all right, I'm going to be out for lunch. I'm going to rent out my desk. <laughs> <laughs> and they made this whole video. And so this guy, and he goes, and he's like, he's like, I'm me, but I'm also a lot of other people. And I'll go and be like a pharmacist during his lunch break. <laughs> and he'll go and like, um, it's so funny. He'll I like go, I like jokes inspired by puns. Like pun air, jokes like are pretty Airbnb. good. Like Airbnb. Airbnb. Plus it's like, they put a lot of time into the video and it's, it's pretty charming. Yeah, yeah. So, like we could have done one month jails. One month jail. One month. One month whales. One month fails. One month fails. Yeah, so many things. One month eating kale. Or snails. Asperger. One month kale. <laughs> kale. <laughs> I like that. That could be a good word right um, so this, so this is a pretty good. I thought this was a pretty good blog post uh, on the next web. Okay. Um, with some good April Fool jokes. What's another good one? So I'm gonna share with you what I think my April Fool's favorite April Fool's joke is. Sure. Right of all time, best April Fool's joke of from a tech time. company all time. Ready? Gmail. Was a joke? Gmail came out on April 1st, uh, ten years ago today actually, was the first Gmail. Was it a joke? But that was the thing. Uh, Sa uh, Sergey, Sergey said, the best April Fool's joke is one in which the next day they all thought it was a joke. So everyone thought Gmail was a joke the first day. Uh, and everybody's like, there's no way that you're going to get one gigabyte of storage. That was what G Gmail was like, one yeah. gigabyte. Whereas everyone else had 10 megabytes at the time. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, there was advertisements everywhere. It's like, no ads, you know, they just started really big. Nerdy joke. The ultimate April Fool's joke was to launch something kind of crazy on April 1st and have it still exist on April 2nd. And I like how he said I that. Don't, I don't think that's the ultimate April Fool's joke it's at all. It's so funny. What? Because he was, reporters from TechCrunch, they were calling him and they were like, um, you're, you're, this is a joke, right? And it just also shows like how innovative Google was that like the thing that was like true, people were like, uh, no, that can't be true. That like this this Gmail thing's coming out. I just don't think that's a good April Fool's joke. God, like the so ultimate. Funny. I think it's interesting. Because it's, it's an interesting real. commentary on society. Yeah, it is interesting. It's not very funny though to me. Oh, it's so funny. Is that kind of dry? The dry humor. It's like, like it's like like anti humor. <laughs> you're like it is. It's like, it's like a snobbish kind of like I am. Yeah. British humor. Like if I worked for Gmail the next day, I would have given this to my chin. I would have grown a beard. All right. Yeah. Do you have a favorite? Um, I really like the Bonobos uh, girlfriend pants, where they said they were releasing girls' pants for guys to like accentuate their asses. Girls' pants for guys? Yeah. Nice. So like, I could go like my like yoga pants and go. Is that what it is? Well, it's like the opposite of the boyfriend pants for girls. Uh, I don't even know what that is. The boyfriend pants for girls are like. You know what that is, Sydney? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like the whole idea of like girls uh, look good in like boys' clothes sometimes, that kind of thing. Girls do look good in boys clothes sometimes. Exactly. And so as a guy, have yeah, you ever worn your girlfriend's pants? No. So it never happened, like in the past at any point? 
Sure. Yeah, no, I've never done that. I've definitely worn my girlfriend's jeans. And no, they, I never did that. They, just make they wouldn't fit, I don't think. Fantastic. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Hmm, okay. Because there's a different way that it just sits. Huh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe I would, I would find myself staring at your ass. Maybe, maybe it's not girls' asses that guys are attracted to. It's, it's the jeans. Unlikely. <laughs> that's what Sir Mixlot was talking about. Um, I dig it. All I, right. I have a story for you now. All right, next story. Okay, so this, um, it's kind of a joke, kind of not. Did you see this? OkCupid okay, urges users to abandon Firefox. I heard about this, yeah. Yeah, so they recently started posting this message up on their site. If you access OkCupid.com okay, with a Firefox oh. browser. Yeah. I pulled it up for us here. Right. Uh, oh, this is today? This it's is, supposed to be an April Fool's? To, it's not an April Fool's, though. That's the other weird thing. Um, so Mozilla's new CEO, right, this guy named Brendan Eich, who's yep. been the CTO for a while, yep. is kind of famously like anti-equal um, rights for gay couples, right? He's, he's, uh, he's, I think he's voted against or for Prop 8 and like yep. contributed to charities that supported against it. Um, and he just became the CEO. And, uh, and so OkCupid okay now is basically doing this like online petition that says, hey, it looks like you're a Firefox user. Uh, Mozilla's new CEO is an opponent of, of equal rights for gay marriage. So you can't We would go to therefore the prefer that our users not use Mozilla software to access OkCupid. Uh, uh, I don't know about and that. then it says, politics is normally not part of the business of a website. We all know there's a lot more wrong than misguided CEOs, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, However, you know, if you want to keep using Firefox, the link at the bottom will take you through to the site. However, we urge you to consider different software for accessing OkCupid. So they still give you the option, but they're taking like a pretty serious sin. So it's, it happens to fall on April Fool's Day. I think they started it technically yesterday too, so I don't know. Yeah. But, um, but it's, it's a kind of... What do you think about that? I love it. Nah. I, lo I really like... I think companies can take a stand like this. I, I think it's something that's, you just like, it's just obstructing someone from using the site. I think it's just kind of like pissing on their users a little bit. What's the point? And um, it's like everybody has a political opinion. How, I mean, but how is obstructing them from using the site the same as pissing on the users? I mean, it's also like a lot of people work at Mozilla that work really hard on Firefox. And just because one guy who happens to be the CEO, like all of the company's work has to get kind of pissed on. I agree with you that. You know, it's That's not a good point. really fair. That's a good point. It's like several, I don't know, hundreds, thousands of people. Yeah. And they have no say over their CEO and what kind of stuff he does personally. Yeah. Right? It's not like the company is like anti-gay. Totally. And I mean, just to be clear, like, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Firefox and, you know, but like, I'm, I'm sad to see this happen to them. And, you know, I, I totally think he's in the wrong, but still, it just seems like, um, oh, the same thing happened with Chick-fil-A, right? With Chick-fil-A, one of the guys spoke out and there was, in that case, it was like the CEO or something said something about gay marriage. And in that case, people like stopped, well, Cool. Certain people stopped eating there, and certain people started eating there to make up for the people stopped eating there. But the point being that, like, the users kind of had a choice. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like they stopped serving gay people, which would be ridiculous. It's right. kind of the opposite, you know, which is like right, right. going too far. I mean, I think the users still, I guess, they do have a choice here, but it is obstructive. It's a little obstructive, yeah. Right. Yeah. I think it's, a, it's an interesting, like, case study for yeah. what you can do and, like, you know, how you can, I've never seen any site uh, really say like, you shouldn't use this browser right. for, re for the reasons like this, Yeah. right? Besides maybe like, you're using so, really old. So maybe here's software. like, here's where this would be better. So it's like, if they obstructed you at the point that you were trying to like, what am I trying to say here? Uh, if you're trying to message someone. What's that? When like, yeah, like if you were gay and you're on OkCupid and you're like um, messaging someone that's gay and it's like, by the way, right? Yeah. Because it's like the SOPA thing, right? When, when all the websites went out for SOPA, um, the, the government was going to shut down the web. Mm -hmm. And it made sense that Tumblr, Wikipedia all went black. They mm -hmm. shut down their sites because it was like, if SOPA goes through in legislation, like. this is what it's going to be like. So right. that kind, I would kind of support that. It makes sense. So in this, the, I guess the, like, the same thing would be like, if you're searching for gay people on OkCupid, okay 
that point, you may get a message from like the founder of OkCupid who's like, that would have been a much more unobstructed way to do it, is if you got a message from him in the system. I can see the, the headline already, OkCupid targets gay users. <laughs> That's what they're doing. No, well, no, they're targeting everyone now. Yeah, yeah. It would be bad. That's bad. Next story. <laughs> <laughs> How to never forget ever again my exploration of spaced repetition. You forgot a word there. My exploration of spaced repetition. I would never forget uh, anything. I forgot again. the title. <laughs> so uh, this is a post written by you that yeah. you posted on Medium yeah, and this. ended up on Hacker News this week. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I, I rather liked it. Thank you. Um, That's very nice. So this idea of spaced repetition, uh, I'm, I'm going to give what I took away, what I like, and then you can, I have some questions for you. Okay. But um, I think the, the coolest idea of, of space, so how do, who doesn't want to not ever forget anything, right? Did I say that? There's a lot of negatives there. <laughs> who doesn't ever want to not ever forget nothing? Do you want to not ever whatever? forget nothing? Yes. I already forgot. So, uh, yeah, that's a problem. Like, people's names, yes. right, is, is like, a yeah. big thing. Uh, it's funny. I have people compliment me a lot that I remember people's names. And, okay. I, and I am actually, this, the truth is, I am horrible at remembering people's names. So why do they compliment you? Be this is good, right? This yes. Is, yeah, this is good. Uh, this is almost conversational. <laughs> this, this is almost conversational. It's almost <laughs> like we're having an educated conversation. <laughs> Um, because I realized that that was a weakness that I had, yeah. you know, like a while back. And yeah. so maybe about four or five years ago, uh, I would, after I'd meet every, you know, people like for the first time, I would write their name down mm -hmm. and then just like two or three things about them that would help me. Cause sometimes you meet someone, you know, in San Francisco and then I'm not there for three months again. God, you know, I can't, I can't totally forget them. So, so I've been making notes and I've been using some kind what of space. Did, what, what, what did my card say about me when you first met me? Do you want me to look? You have it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I don't, I don't have, I don't have, I can't believe I don't have a car for you anymore. No, I don't have a car for you. That's cool. Whatever. Yeah. I guess you never I guess, thought I was important enough to I remember. guess you weren't as important. I, guess, well, I started getting creepy when I started just knowing too much about you. We started rooming together last year in California. Oh, and you're like, like you're all the things <laughs> like, he does in the bathroom. Sleeping. When he sleeps, he sleeps on his left side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he drools a little bit. I do sleep on my left side. Yeah. <laughs> and I drool a little bit. Oh my God. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, yeah, I don't have a card for you, but I would have gladly shared it if I had it. Ooh. So, so that's, that's what I've been doing. So, so this is great. Uh, so space repetition is the idea of um, making, let me try to explain it and you can tell me. It's something like you make a note and then you come back to it a few days later, every five days maybe, to like put it back into your head. Yeah. yeah. It's like a, it's, so it's a system for flashcards flash or for cards. digital flashcards. And uh, it's like most people will just look at a card Yep. And then just they'll like keep looking at it because they think that that's how you remember stuff better. But it's really boring uh, to, to do that. Yes. And it's like, it doesn't matter how many times you keep looking at it, like that's not going to help you remember it. Yep. Uh, so space repetition is this idea that like there's an efficient way of like when to repeat cards that you don't remember. Yeah, because it's like, like in college you cram, right? And you're like, right. for one week you're like definitions for the SATs or whatever, not in college, but you know what I mean, for this thing. And then you're like... Okay, I know it, and then on Monday you forget it. Yes. So this is cool because it's like you're doing a little bit over time. Exactly. And this way you don't you don't waste time like like studying stuff when it's no longer uh, like when it's you know when you don't need to remember. Yep. It, right. Um, so you can end up remembering a lot more. Oh, time. and there's Anki. There's this Anki app which you Anki. talk about, um, which I believe we both first read about in the Derek Silver's article. Is Silver's. That where, Silver's. That where you heard about it? Yep. Yeah. Um, no, nope. I take it back. Not worried about it. Okay. I can pretend though. Yes, and that's uh, a really great article that shows you uh, some of the tips. And so, yes. um, I've been using it ever since I, I read that article about like a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool. I always like when I'm walking on the subway or walking down the street, sometimes I'll just be doing flashcards. Swiping. Swiping left, swiping right, trying doing, to remember things. Doing flashcards. Yeah. Yeah, I think someone should build a system like this, but for uh, like that connects to Facebook maybe. Just pulls everyone's information. Yeah. That seems like a very you problem because you have so many friends on Facebook. I guess it's not the most. I think it is a me problem, but some other people have the problem. Yeah. Cool. We'll all have a problem eventually. I'll have the problem. Yeah. We played a game today in improv class called Pass the Clap. Yeah. <laughs> Did you play that? Yeah. It's like, I guess you can't play with two people, <laughs> but you pass it back to me. <laughs> pass it back to me. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. Uh, exactly. And then you sing on top of it. Did you oh, we didn't do the singing. Oh, yeah. I just Pass, love the name. We start every class with Pass the, the clap. clap. It's a great name. I've got another one for you. It's a small one, though. Square Market accepts Bitcoin. Square Whoa. now accepts Bitcoin. Right? That's um, actually huge, man. It's gigantic. It's gigante. That's a joke. That's an April Fool's. No, it was, well, it was clearly launched on March 31st. That's a good April Fool's. It's not, it's not, because see, March okay. 31st. Okay, okay, okay. See? I mean... Maybe they intentionally, like, uh, release it early. Yeah, or accidentally. That's amazing. I mean, that would be amazing. If you, I mean, for Bitcoin, that's amazing that you could I use it. Stripe said something about Bitcoin, too, recently, as well. What? Yeah. So now, uh, yeah. Stripe launches a Bitcoin pilot for mobile. Square now accepts Bitcoin. Wow. It's a big deal, right? Uh, I would love to hear from anyone if you are using Square, Stripe, or really just Bitcoin in general. Or if you plan on paying with Bitcoin. Yeah. Like, how would you start using it? Uh, is it interesting? Uh, how are you using it right now? Um, I'm a little bit out of touch at the moment with how people are using Bitcoin, so that'd be kind of cool. Are you using it? No. Not right now, right? No, not currently. Yeah, that's fascinating. Um, I also have another one that I thought would be fun to share. Go for it. Okay. So this one was, the title was Stack Overflow Closed My Question, That's Why We Exist. Ooh. And it was just like a creation story. But the site for this is called codingstyleguide.com. Nice. And Coding Style Guide is all about like, um, you know, the, the coding style stuff that like, you don't really learn about anywhere. So like how to make CSS language. classes, how to like name things. Like, yeah, like the conventions, Yeah. right? Like CSS, each selector gets its own line. Right, so yeah. this is bad, this is good. Okay. You know, it's just like... See, the thing though is it's really subjective and you know... And that's true. I don't do that. But, but that's why there's voting that happens, right? So like... Ah. Right, so Ruby, for example, avoid the return where it's not required. So, you know, at the end of a method, you can write return and then the thing it returns. Whoa. But avoid doing that. Yeah. And, I mean, both of them work, right? Yeah, and in yeah. fact, like, this is what's actually happening. Yeah. But this is the style guide. These are like the informal norms of the system that end up being developed. Um, and I'm sure will be changing. That's good. Would you right. recommend for students to, to check that out? Is that a good place to go? Yes. Is it, is it ready for? Yeah, it's totally yeah. ready. And it's by the guy who, uh, who created Learn Python the hard way. Is that Sean, I believe? Oh, that's a great site for learning Python. And he has learned something else the hard way, too. I think he has almost all of them. Like, learn oh, you know what's really good about the hard way? The code, uh, the command line. Learn the command line the hard the way. Hard way, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Dig so it. Those are great. We'll put those links down below if you guys want to check those out. It's really nice. All over. OK. Yay. Thank you guys for watching Hacker News Nation with us today. Episode number 20. Uh, we'll be back next week at the end of your week to recap the top tech stories. If you want to subscribe, we're on iTunes, audio and video version. That's all. That's it. Food of Fafa. We're gonna, we have uh, Sydney with us who's gonna help us make kombucha in the future. Possibly. Kombucha drinks. We may have some new kombucha in the future. Um, and if you have anything that you want us to talk about, Next week's show. Future stories. Shoot an email to... Fans at... Uh, what is it? One, one month? month. Fans at one month .com. Fans at one month .com. All right. And cheers. We're out. And pass the clap to somebody. Dumb. Da -da. Da -da 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 -da. Pass the clap. <laughs>